They call me Squirrel. What's going on, Squirrel Squad? It's your boy, the Squirrel, and uh, I'm going to mess this up again, I think, uh, but I think it's Yeoman. I think it's Yeoman now. I think I might have got it right. I don't even know. I think I've called him Yeoman or Yeoman and Yeoman, and uh, that's probably all the same word. I don't even know. I think it's Yeoman, though. Uh, let's take a let's take a gander at this. This is part four or five. I like banged out like one, and then like a week later I did two, and then like three and a half weeks later I did th three. And now it's been almost a month. I don't even know what's going on here. I have these all saved, like you know, ready to rock and roll, and I I I, I don't know how I'm missing them. Anyways, here we go. It's part four. Part five will be out soon. Let's wrap this series up. It's uh, four or five. Tower of London, the Yeoman. Let's, uh, let's dig into what's going on out there. New people, subscribe. It was designed and built over a period of nearly 200 years purely to defend this. This is known as the Norman Keep or White Tower. This was built on the orders of a Frenchman. William, the Duke of Normandy, defeated our Saxon King, Harold II, at the Battle of Hastings on October the 15th, 1066. This is the birth of civilization. <laughs> the French influence here in England turned us from barbaric, beer swilling, baby eating, Saxon savages into the refined and cultured people we are today. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. William had to put down rebellion and insurrection everywhere in Britain. But by the year 1078, his spin doctors were calling him the Conqueror. It stabilised the land. People were happy. He felt safe enough to build his principal palace and fortress here. The work took 20 years. And for nearly 500 years, kings and queens lived on the top floor. And the floor below was accommodation for their most favoured knights and their ladies. The lowest floor with windows, that's where the kitchens were. It's where the soldiers were billeted. There is, however, another floor. <laughs> <laughs> this one's partly below ground. The walls there are 15 feet thick. There are no windows. It's dark. We're close to the river. It's always damp and cold. This was the perfect place for the... Dungeon. Dungeon. The wine. wine. <laughs> oh. It's a palace. Hello. I told you this at the beginning. You're not paying attention. <laughs> this was never built as a prison. You're getting obsessed. <laughs> Our first prisoner was a French bishop by the name of Ranulf de Flambeau. Would you lock a French bishop in a wine cellar? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> the year was 1100. He was imprisoned in the top of that turret. By 1101, he'd noticed that his warders liked to drink. We still do. <laughs> he threw them a party, got them all drunk on wine, brought up from the cellar in casks that were bound round with rope. That was the practice at the time. While the warders slept off this party, Ranolf craftily removed the rope from these casks, and this ancient French bishop abseiled 90 odd feet on an improvised line and got away. <laughs> I think we learned from that. You're wrong. <laughs> the Tower of London is arguably the most famous prison in the world. But it only ever had three and a half thousand prisoners. And of these, 81 escaped. <laughs> An escape ratio of one in 42. This makes it the least secure prison anywhere in the history of the planet. <laughs> they were rubbish. <laughs> Not all the escapees were lucky. A Welsh prince, Griffith Ap Llewellyn, pulled a similar stunt from that turret, see? Slightly different, look you. He said, see me, I want clean sheets every day, isn't it? <laughs> this was unusual, particularly for a Welshman. <laughs> now, of course, he's tying his bedding together, but his rope work was appalling. When Griffith made his bid for freedom, his rope fell apart, and he plunged to his death by her. Where, as you can see, the daffodil, the national flower of Wales, bloom in a sea of yellow. <laughs> it's poetry, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you are quite right. 
have to national... wait a while. 400 years. It was not until the turn of the 16th century that the wine rack was put to one side and another rack was installed. <laughs> this rack had a very sinister purpose. Torture. Ooh. The rack. Now, torture is misunderstood. <laughs> Many people think of torture as a punishment. It isn't. It just feels that way. <laughs> torture is a way to keep a conversation going. <laughs> it is the turbo charge to an interrogation. And the most famous interrogation to take place here, that of Guy Fawkes. Now he was the only man in British history to enter Parliament with honest and noble intentions. <laughs> Certainly the only man to enter Parliament with a clear agenda and the resources to see it through. You don't see that in government these days. He was going to blow the place up. He got caught. James I would have been killed in that blast and he was keen to know who was in Guy's gut. Guy said nothing. The interrogators asked if they could use torture and a torture warrant was signed. Only 48 of these have ever been issued, and torture did not take place without one. It is not as widely used as you think. <coughs> Guy Fawkes was bound by his wrists and ankles to two spindles. These were set in the rack, and by means of a ratchet mechanism, they turned in opposite directions. He began to stretch. A pay a fortune for that on a health farm. <laughs> well, stretch a man nearly four inches. At the three inch mark, all therapeutic value is lost. <laughs> joints get pulled apart. Now your joints, they're held together with ligament and tendon. These are stronger than bone. When your joints get pulled apart, it is in fact your bones that break. Pain! Lots of pain! That's what we're talking about here. You're right. <laughs> they all cracked on the rack. Now, some say Guy Fawkes didn't, but he did sign a confession. Good as a death warrant. Yeah. Taken from here to Westminster Palace Yard, a commoner found guilty of treason, like William Wallace, he was hanged, drawn and... Quartered. Yeah. Unlike William Wallace, he didn't suffer. So brutal had been his racking that as he made his way up the gallows steps, he collapsed and died. But they carried on anyway. Wasn't it stupid to build this under the approach lake to two airports? <laughs> this is still a place of torture. It's a gift shop now. <laughs> the heart of Tadreen and the heart of darkness in English history. Yep, that was a literary reference there. But I thought, oh, well done, well done, yeah. Oh boy. All right. So there we were. We were back with the yeoman for part four or five. Uh, the next one will be the end of this. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's kind of cool. I learned a lot from it. So um, that was worth it alone. Plus, obviously, the uh, storytelling techniques of this gentleman are amazing. That makes it more fun. I enjoyed uh, the, the, you know, the the comparisons through history and things like that. And of course, you know, getting to find out how far you can stretch somebody. But, uh, yeah, that was about it. There was the Tower of London 4 or 5. I hope you enjoyed it. And we're going to do Part 5 very soon. You guys be great. Be awesome. Keep smiling. Scroll up. Mm -hmm.